Hello, welcome. Now we are going to learn how to draw an ellipse using for arc method. For arc method is actually a method used when we want to draw a, a circle in isometric. So in short, we are trying to say that isometric circles are what we call ellipses. And now in this case, isometric uh, for arc method is an approximate method meaning it doesn't give so accurate results so it's only applicable for smaller circles but if you want to draw bigger ellipses it means we are not going to use that for arc method we might use uh, a different method in that case therefore welcome and uh, let's see how we can be able to draw uh, an ellipse using that method we are calling the four arc method now what we need first of all is a, a baseline on this baseline we shall be able to draw the isometric lines the isometric lines are lines that lie on the base at 30 degrees so we shall have the baseline and then we draw it using your h3 h pencil you draw using your three edge pencil and once we have that line we can say let our isometric lines begin somewhere from there then having it we can now come and draw isometric lines which are 30 degrees at that point we have marked and here we can have to use our set square that is 30 degrees set square we draw the first isometric line at that point then we draw another isometric line we only rotate our set square then we can be able to draw another isometric line at that decrease again at that point we draw 30 degree line Good. Now once we have that, we want to draw a square. This square here is going to circumscribe our circle. Now this square, let's use a arbitrary value of the size so that uh, we don't have a specific measurement. Let's just have a arbitrary value. I can have it somewhere there and there. Those are two sides of a square. Again, we are going to have uh, other lines, isometric lines, from those points we have marked. With your set square that measures 30 degree, you can have another isometric line that point. You can draw an isometric line. Again, we rotate. Once we rotate, we come up with another symmetric line from this other point to ensure your vertical edges do not uh, fluctuate for us to be able to get uh, straight lines and actually horizontal line so that one is going to give us our other line which is isometric now once we have this, we can name it as A, B, C, and D. Then we are going to draw a midpoint or to have a midpoint between B and C, another midpoint between A and D. So how do you get a midpoint? A midpoint means you, you just bisect this BC. You bisect BC. You can have X that will assist that bisect. Now once you have bisected, we are not going to join the axis, but they are only going to give us a point where we need to 
have a midpoint so here the, this one and this one gives us that so this midpoint here we can call it f now we need to have another midpoint along ad in this case we are not going to draw but instead we are just going to transfer bf because this is a square and once we do the division of one side it is equal to the other side so we just transfer it here then we can name this as e and then what we shall do we shall join e to b we now join e to b then we join f to d f to d then we join a to c as our major diagonal a to c as our major diagonal we join it as you can see we are having some other centers we can call this one center h then we can call this one center g now we are going to draw four arcs the first arc there we are going to use center g with radius gh gf i mean so we can have that arc drawn then we are going to have another uh, arc by center h with radius he again we can have another arc there of course they are equal sorry then we are going to have another arc using center b with radius e so we can have b with radius b e then we draw that arc then lastly we are going to have center d with radius df and we draw another arc those four arcs are giving us a circle in isometric and this circle here we are calling it an ellipse as you can see it is a, a an approximate method because these arcs might not be in line as in they are not going to coincide at one point if it becomes more larger then we expect poor results but the smaller the the square is the more accurate it becomes and that's why i said this method is only applicable for smaller circles if you want to draw smaller circles in isometric you can use this method thank you